Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's all right today. Doing their doing their thing, enjoying their life, finding the pleasure in the little things on a day-to-day basis. That's what I try to do. Pleasure in the little things. Anyway, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, we are drawing a fairy in this video. I, I say we... Because, you know, you're kind of there with me. So we're, we're going to go along together. Um, I've been calling her the Dramatic Light Fairy. Because <laughs> she doesn't have a name. I don't always name my subjects. So uh, she certainly doesn't have a name. If you want to leave a comment, you want to name her, we'll go over some names together. Um She's got quite the personality. She's she's a tough little thing, I think, which I like a lot. Uh, nothing like tough. Tough women. They make the world go round. Um, but anyway, yeah, she's uh, she has dramatic lighting on her face. I purchased a Graphite Studio photo reference pack. I think it's called Dynamic Lighting. And I've used it in a couple of my sketches already. You can probably at this point recognize uh, the face is kind of similar to some of my other sketches in my sketchbook. I like this model's face. and They, they light her up really well. So she's in my sketchbook now. Um, light and contrast, to me, that is the key to good art. If you have a decent amount of contrast it, people find your art very interesting and that means very good lights and very nice deep darks I've noticed a lot of uh, young and inexperienced or less experienced artists will not put the deepest darks in their art form and uh, if you're going for realism or anything that's just, I don't know. Some things are soft and they're pretty when they're soft. But if, if you, you should still have some kind of the deepest dark in there. And the lightest light as well. Uh, I've heard the phrase drawing the light. That's me checking the proportions. Because I'm drawing at a little bit of an angle. The camera's at an angle. So I just felt like her forehead was massive. The way I was looking at it in the camera LCD screen so I had to pick it up and check it and so I just adjusted it just a little bit it's kind of weird drawing at an angle but it's kind of fun too it's different um, some people say you're drawing with light or painting with light or painting the light which yes I, I, I can understand that but in my head it's always been about the shadows the shadows, the colors of the shadows, and the forms of the shadows make the form, especially in portraiture. Uh, the shadows tell you everything about that form. And the light is like icing on the cake, or the sprinkles on the icing on the cake. <laughs> the lightest lights always come at the very end to me. So, of course, I'm working with Derwent Ink Tense pencils again. They're soluble, water-soluble ink pencils. They are not colored pencils. They're not wax-based. Just wanted to give y'all a, a little glimpse of the set. Um, and when I, when I draw with them to do the face, I'm not as happy as I was doing the watercolor. I I do like them for a lot of things, um, but to me, when you put the water on them, the, because they're ink, they don't flow. Even when you put a lot of water, they don't flow. Uh, how do I put it? It's kind of hard to describe. They're kind of still tacked down to where you put the pencil. And it's not that... I do love them because the, the pencil lines do... Unless they're very harsh pencil lines, like how soft I'm drawing with them. It's really just sketchy. I'm just on the top of the paper's uh, texture. That's why it looks so grainy. 
and light. Um, even when I get into the dark shadows later, you'll see it. It's very grainy because I'm just, I'm not pressing hard at all on these pencils, mostly. Um, every now and then I will, and I've noticed that when I do that, the water doesn't pick those marks up. But these, the water will just turn it into a wash. But the wash usually has a choppiness to it when you're doing a broader um, picture. If you, you kind of have to do it in sections, which you sometimes have to do with watercolor too, but uh, I've had a problem with the graininess and, and I that's why I keep trying them because I want to kind of get past that or figure out the trick to making them softer. I even, in this one, you'll, you'll see me go back. I've done a couple faces and I really prefer doing watercolor and pre-mixing the colors of watercolor than putting those on. They seem to flow better into a wet surface. It's funny, that shape on her nose, isn't it just like the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest triangle between her eyes? But it works out in the end. So there was a lot of shadow on her eyes, especially the eye on the right. And I was a little, uh, not a little, I was very interested to see how the eyes would be different um, instead of the same, and the same light, you know, the one on the, looking at her, the one on the left is going to have a lot more light in it. The one on the right is almost completely in shadow. And uh, I wanted to keep that. I wanted to keep that. So I'm still trying to simplify faces. It's a struggle. <laughs> As you can see, I, I don't have a lot of information on the nose. I basically just did the bottom plane of it in shadow and then the, the nostril, you know, the side cheek and then the nostril flap just a little bit. It's not nearly as detailed as I used to make my noses, noses, but I still go in and kind of flesh it out a little bit more later. So again, just trying to find that balance between illustrative and realism. I noticed working with ink tense pencils, it's kind of an act of faith because it's so pale and grainy and soft and you can't <laughs> you're layering colors and you're kind of like these colors worked before together so hopefully they'll work together again so when you go to change something and you add a different color it's like oh I wonder how this is going to end up looking you can't tell until you add the water I have tried going back over areas with more ink tense pencil after I've washed, done the wash and let it dry and I'll come back and do ink tense pencil again on top of it. That's when I tend to get a lot more uh, lines and a lot more jarring, you know, transitions. They're not very soft transitions. So I don't do that anymore. So my first pass of watercolor pencil, or not watercolor pencils, but ink tense pencils, my first pass is basically the only time I'm ever putting them on there unless there's, you know, a real issue. And uh, I actually have started to use Prismacolor colored pencils afterwards to kind of even out the tones. I use them a lot in this one at the end to deepen the shadows because shadows just didn't get dark enough on her face and her neck. And of course I was really trying to play with the shadow and the light to make the, the light stand out. Um, I feel like the... <laughs> I feel like the colored pencils, because this paper has so much tooth, the colored pencils uh, really stayed on top of it and became grainy. And the grainy nature is not something I'm really super fond of. It's okay, you know, in the illustration. I, I love this drawing. At the end of it, I think it, it did what I wanted it to do. Uh, but I can certainly feel that I, I'm going to try when I do um, another fairy, I'm going to be doing the skin tones and whatnot in watercolor. 
and maybe not even have to use colored pencil at all to even it out because it's watercolor. So hopefully I can master that a little bit better and do colored pencil only here and there for outlines and just for little touch-ups instead of large swaths of colored pencil. Keep that graininess down to a, a minimum. I spend a lot of time on hair and I think you have to. A lot of people are, I mean, you, I guess you don't have to obviously, but I have to. <laughs> Some people have very simplified hair and they do just an outside shape and then they fill it in with color. It's really beautiful. It's, a, it's very stylized, which is nice. Um, and maybe I need to work more towards chunky hair. I don't know, but I really like seeing hair and the hair flow and the variations of color uh, like I did here. So I basically, even when I did portraiture, I would spend almost just as much time basically on the hair as I would on the face. And uh, that's another thing sometimes beginners don't really grasp at first is that when you're dealing with a lot of hair, I mean, God bless bald headed men, right? Am I right? <laughs> but when you're dealing with a lot of flowing hair, you, you have to spend time on it. There's a lot of information there. So here I am about to start adding water to the ink tense pencil and as you can see I've started with one of the lightest areas on her forehead which is where um, she has a nice bright spot of white and I've learned that you can fade into a color that way if you just start there and start kind of working in a circle. Um, I'm still learning how to have enough water on my brush, but not too much water on my brush. That seems to be a, a balance I'm always trying to find. You can see right there where I put the drop next to her eye. There's a lot of water on my brush, probably too much water. Um, and I'm trying to like use it <laughs> for the rest of the forehead. It has a very nice illustrative quality to it when you first put the water down. It just has that choppiness to it. And again, I, I'm trying to make my peace with things not being perfect, things not being completely real or realistic per se. So I, I kind of like it in the choppiness, but I always see that there's improvements that I want to make on them. So. The skin tones are a little, they're okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm just critiquing my work when I'm watching these videos, like constantly self critiquing, which, you know, you kind of do anyway. And usually when I draw something, I don't have the, uh, the, uh, ability to go over and watch my processes, which is, this has been really quite a learning experience to watch how I do things. I can actually change them later. So this is a little cathartic for me to videotape myself and watch myself paint. It's like, oh, I put way too much water on that. Doing a little bit of lightning in the shadows. A little bit of light in a shadow is always such a beautiful, dramatic thing. I follow the reference pretty closely. I keep it up the whole time on a laptop in front of me. Um, I highly recommend 
even if you're not staring at it, following it, really making it look like that quote unquote person exactly. Um, I think you should always have a reference up. I know there are some people that are very good at drawing from imagination. Kudos to them. My hat is off to them. I just personally don't know how they do it that well. I can draw from my imagination, but to me, it's always missing a lot of information. So I like to always keep some kind of reference photo up. Um, I don't, I draw from life when I'm doing just like nature studies. I haven't done that in a little while, but I have done them before. I was actually thinking about doing that a lot in my next sketchbook. I'm actually almost full. This one's almost done. Oh, a sketchbook tour. How exciting. <laughs> I'll actually have a whole sketchbook filled. I don't know what to do with that. It's just so cool. It's a really cool thing I've been working towards. See, look at all that water. But sometimes you need a lot of water to really get the uh, pencil strokes to blend more. Of course, I purposefully put darker pencil strokes in her hair just to give you that, you know, the the feel of strands. Here's where I make a mistake. And uh, you'll see it later. Might as well point it out now because I'm about to make it. <laughs> I have not been letting the sections dry. So as soon as you put a section down next to a wet section, water, of course, likes to go into other places where water is. Wet into wet. Uh, it's a very useful tool in watercolors. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize that it was just leaching right up into the hair. You can see it happening. That's funny. I notice it later. I don't notice it right away. I have a little bit of that blue on my brush, so I go and intensify the blue in her eyes a little bit better. In the darks. I come back later and really adjust her eyes with colored pencil. The darker the colors with the ink tens, as you can see in the... Uh, shoulder there or there yeah the darker the color I've noticed the more those ridges show up and I just kind of work with them kind of treat them like <laughs> that's me coming back from from draw from drying time and you can see that uh, of course I didn't tape it down so now I have to tape it down <laughs> a little flappy bit on the left that's when I see the bleed. What to do, what to do. So I was going to start inking. That was my Micron pen, but I just put it back down again. And uh, I'm going to try to cover it with colored pencil. Really burnishing in to the paper. And uh, blending it out. And trying to make that look like hair. Instead of a bleeding blue It comes out pretty good later. Uh, I'm pretty happy that the colored pencils at least. I'm trying gel pen. Just trying to deflect some of the shadow. It was really hard to kind of get the colors right. I used about, as you can see, about four or five different colors just to get the color right. The gel pen just has that absolute white in it and it'll break up a hard line. And then just colored pencil right over it. I don't get anxious like I used to um, when I'm doing these drawings, these illustrative drawings. And I'm, I'm really glad. It's, it's, I have a lot more faith now and confidence that even when mistakes happen, they're just a part of it. So I just go with them. Sometimes the mistakes work out to my advantage. Happy little trees, happy little mistakes. Uh, and sometimes I can know how to cover them. Sometimes I can't. And that's just the nature of it. But uh, when I'm drawing in my sketchbooks, when I'm doing these drawings for these videos, I think I'm going to concentrate on things that uh, make me happy. 
things that are a little more loose. I do have some bigger projects in the works this year. And actually, I'm, I'm going to start one pretty soon here. Um, and it's a portrait. And I'm probably going to film it. I just, it'll be a longer, it'll, it'll take me a longer time to get that done. Portraiture is a lot more difficult. <laughs> Takes a lot of time. But I'll still film it. Hopefully be able to capture it and, and put a video up. That video will just be a long time coming. This I sat down and did in a afternoon. It was a nice day off from work. <laughs> Enjoy the inking process. You can see right there, I'm hesitating, because when I put that line on that iris, it was wonky. And I was looking at it thinking, I just put a really dark line around the iris. And then I just went back over it and evened it out and also adjusted the other one a little bit until I feel like felt like they were looking in the same direction. Um, I know a lot of really good artists that I look up to, they, the technique is to do the eyes first. I used to always do the eyes first, uh, but I don't always do that now. And I think I might have to start doing that again because clearly you got to get the eyes right. Of course, I don't know. It's not like something I would have gone in and just whited out the whole eyeball. I always just work with it. So... Again, as you can see, there's a lot of detail in the hair to take those chunks of color and to turn them into something that really does look like hair. You get that illusion. I like that bowed out piece of hair on the right hand side. I have long hair myself and it does all kinds of crazy stuff when I wear a sweater. And of course, she's got a cape or a hood underneath there and it just looked cool. Made it look a little more interesting. I could have left it out. You can kind of put your thumb over it and kind of see what it would have looked like. It just would have been less interesting. And if you treat it right and, and make it look right, it belongs there. It's interesting there. Yeah. I also like the trifecta of curling going on. She's got the curl in her bangs. She's got that curl on her shoulder and she's got the loop of the cape and it adds to this flow kind of falling down the side and of course the curl of the cape brings you back over a little bit to her hair so there's a little bit of rhythm there that I like too and it would have been less interesting if I had left that curl out here I'm darkening using the colored pencils again and 
darkening the upper lip. It's really in shadow. So I'm trying to bring out that highlight in the eye that's in the light. Again, looking at the references and making sure that I am hitting all the hot spots. That's what I call them, hot spots. I think other people do too. I don't think that's just me. <laughs> A hot spot is where light is really hitting and you really want to show it off. And here I realized that white colored pencil was really, you know, something I could even some stuff out. So I just went in and even some stuff out with it. Hit the highlights. Finally, I go in and darken the eyes. That had been bothering me the whole time. <laughs> but again, you have to have faith that where you're going with it is going to look good. It's going to look right. This is when I realized the shadows in her face also were not deep enough, were not dark enough. And uh, as you can see, when I go in with this uh, cool gray, it really darkens it up. Finally, that little point above her nose makes sense. <laughs> so it's a very different process than painting in acrylics, which is a medium that I use a lot. So in acrylics, it was I would just be layering over paint. So to kind of feel like I can't really layer over the ink tents. Ink tents reactivate in water. So if you have an ink tents layer on the bottom and then you try to go back over it, I feel like I've done it before and it just did not look good at all. And I think it's just because it reactivates what's underneath it. It, it mixes in with what's underneath it. So I literally use it as a wash of color, preliminary color, and then know that whatever adjustments I need to make later I need to make with something else and in this case I'm using colored pencils. I think I feel like any water based um, any water based medium is going to reactivate the ink tense pencils. So. I still love them. They just have their own little thing. Mediums, you get used to them, you love them for the reason that you love them, and you know, you can jump to other mediums when you're a little tired of how finicky they might be. And then we bring in the gel pen for the absolute white highlights, and then I realized I had missed a spot on her cheek. Um, that highlight had come down on her cheek a lot further in the photo, and I liked that about it. So I just went over it with colored pencil. And then that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed adding that blush pink. That brought a lot of life to that light side of her face. The gel pen I'm still on the fence with about how I feel about it. I love it that it's absolute white. But this one is a little streaky when you put it down. And of course, I, I really lend that to the fact that I'm putting it on top of, in some cases, Prismacolor, which is a wax-based pencil. So that explains why it's not going to sit and uh, behave very well. Um, so I'm going to try it on some watercolors in the future a little bit more. I know I've done it already, but like really paying attention to how it reacts to them. But I do love that little sparkle you get with them. This time I'm trying to finish everything before I sign it. <laughs> and I did it. I didn't work on it after I signed it. It doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but there we go. A little Prismacolor dust. And that's the finished product. A little close up of her. She looks a little paler in the video. Uh, but she is she is pretty soft. It's not she doesn't have a lot of harsh 
really, really harsh shadows or anything. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed making it. And, uh, love and light. Peace out. Have a great day.